Hi, this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have a very special guest. We have one of our podcast team members on a uh, call today. She has a podcast series on The Advisor, and she focuses on legacy writing and storytelling. And Rebecca Vegas has a whole a whole bunch of things she wants to go over today about the importance of storytelling, making the connection, and how it can impact your life in a positive way, not just um, through writing books, but it could help you overall in your overall health. So I'm going to give the floor to Rebecca, and she's going to tell you a little about herself. In case you didn't see her other podcast series, you could listen to that um, after the show. And you can now, she'll tell you a little about herself to get, so you get to know her. And we're going to go right into the storytelling and how that could help you with your overall health. Take it away, Rebecca. Good morning. Good morning. Um, thank you for having me. Um, I appreciate it. And a little bit about me. I've been writing since I was 10. So we're talking, what, 59 years, something like that. A long time, anyway. Um, and it started with poetry and it has moved into, um, novels. It's moved into self-help books. It's moved into children's books. It's moved into a book on how to write a novel. So yeah, I keep busy. Um, I have two more in the works right now. One is a thriller and one is a middle grades, um, history historical fiction. So I'm excited about that, but I'm even more excited about legacy writing and storytelling. And storytelling is the most important thing you can do. Stories help you connect with other people. When they know something about you, that's when they connect. That's when they find you. Yes. Um, some of my first books have connected with people. Mm -hmm. I did not know till long. I had written a book called, So You Think You Want to Be a Mommy for Tweens and Teens because I, I had done my student teaching and the last week of school, the school I taught in allowed all the mommies to bring their little babies to school mm -hmm. the last week which I thought was ridiculous. However, they did it. But I found that if you had one baby, you had this status. Two babies put you up to this status. Three babies put you up to this status. And if you had one every year, you're the queen. <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, since when are babies status symbols? They're babies. But in an inner city school, they are status symbols. And that that broke my heart because these girls are having babies for the wrong reasons. Right. All the wrong reasons. And and they're all single. They're not married. Mm -hmm. So now they're raising four babies and a high school diploma is what they have. Ouch. Yeah. I get into the last six years of my teaching career and I'm in middle school and I have an eighth grade girl tell me the last day of school that she can't wait to get to high school, find a boyfriend and have a baby. And I just went like this. What are we teaching our girls? Cause we're not teaching them the right things. Wow. Somewhere she got a hold of, so you think you want to be a mommy. Her younger sister told me she was reading it. And I thought, okay, fine. No big deal. Um, it's out there. She came up to me years later and said, I want to thank you, Miss Vegas. I said, for what, Lynn? And she said, I read your book on being a mommy and I decided that wasn't the way I wanted to go. So I graduated high school 
and I went to college and I'm a nurse and I met a wonderful man and we got married and I have two little boys mm -hmm. and it's like the impact is something that if I hadn't seen her, I wouldn't have known. Right. I mean, I knew she was married and I knew she had two children. Um, I didn't know they were both boys. Um, I hadn't seen her in years, but she had moved away from where we lived, um, the area that we lived in, because she needed to find a job as a nurse. Right. And she um, also told me that she's going on to become a registered nurse. So she will end up with a four-year degree. And she was partway through that at the time. Mm -hmm. So telling the story was a good thing. Um, I told stories to my daughter when she was little. Yeah. Um, I wish I'd recorded them because I would have loved to have had them for my grandchildren, but right. I didn't. And I didn't write them down. I was just telling her stories. Um, she was about 18 months, two years old. I mean, she wasn't very old. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, she was always the princess in the story. <laughs> so, you know, and it just was one of those things I did. I didn't think of it in terms of, oh, you should write this in a book. Right. I thought of it in terms of just telling my daughter a story. Yeah. And she loved it when I told her stories. Um, but storytelling goes farther than that. Mm -hmm. If you are a business or a small business, you have a story. Right. How did you get to be where you are? Right. Was this your original goal? Right. Because sometimes you get into a position that you never even thought about. Right. And and that's me. When I first started writing, all I wanted to do was write. And then I realized that if I didn't share what I knew, mm -hmm. people would be losing out. Right. And so I share what I have learned about writing, publishing, editing, whatever it takes to make your book right or your story resonate with people. Right. Your business story, when you figure it out and you tell it, you tell it to your employees first. Because once the employees understand how you got to be where you are, it makes a difference. It does. And they feel like they're part of something really important. Yes. When they feel they're part of something important, they tell the customers mm -hmm. the story. And how important it is that they're part of this. And that resonates with the customers who then go and tell their friends and neighbors. Right. And what does that generate for you? More customers. Mm -hmm. And more customers who are going out and sharing this story. Yes. Dudes, that's free advertising right there. And you mm -hmm. can't get any better than personal advertising. Right. Those are reviews. And if you hear enough good reviews, you're going to go check it out. Yes, very true. And so if you're a business, think about your story. I think, think so. about putting it where people can see it. Mm -hmm. First business I ever saw put up anything about their business was Hendrix Motorsports. And they have the 10 commandments of teamwork or something about mm -hmm. being an employee there and, and what they stand for. Right. And I got them to give me their little tiny 
card that it's on. Mm -hmm. And it, they actually gave me about 10 of them. Mm -hmm. And I asked for permission to put it poster size because I wanted my students to see it. Mm -hmm. Not because it was Hendrix Motorsports, but because of what it said. And somewhere, heaven only knows where, um, probably in my office, um, there is a poster that I still have of those Ten Commandments of their business. Yeah. And they are up throughout the business. I mean, you can take, there are tours you can take and you can see the cars and, and some of the workspaces. You can't get into them. You see them through glass windows. Right. You do that. Um, but I was down, my brother worked for Hendrix at the time and I wanted to see what all the hoopla was about. Mm -hmm. And I understand that when I made it into the part where you could walk through and see them working um, through the windows that I had missed Jimmy Johnson by like a minute or two. Mm -hmm. So you win some, you lose some, no big deal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, he was, it's off season. He didn't even have to be there. Right. Um, I was down in the summertime, but it's, it's the story that you tell. And if you're not telling stories, I need to know why. Yes. Because there are stories out there. There are your family history stories. I mean, my great grandmother brought her three children from England to the U.S. through Canada. Mm -hmm. And the big story is her youngest one, my Uncle Ron, fell asleep on a train from Quebec to Montreal and didn't make the exchange in Montreal to come to Detroit. Right. And she was panicked. They found him. She let the, the conductors know um, that he was missing. They found him. They put him on the next train that wouldn't be in until the next morning mm. and my great grandfather went to pick him up and he looked at the man and said that's not my dad oh my goodness he was real small maybe two or three when his dad came to the u.s he was 10 when his mother brought them. Mm -hmm. Hadn't seen his dad since he was two. His dad had changed. Right. He'd gotten older. And it didn't look like it. And my grandfather produced his identification and said, yes, he's my son. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they released him. Um, and so everything was okay, but you know, that was the big story is my uncle got left behind. Right. And, and then when he was found, he said, that's not my dad, <laughs> but it got straightened out. Um, and, and everything was fine. Um, and he lived a long and happy life, um, as a citizen of the United States, um, my grandfather, his sister, and my uncle Ron all became naturalized citizens. My great grandmother did not get her citizenship until Jimmy Carter was running for president. Mm. And she liked him. And she voted for him. I want to ask you a question, if I can. Sure. Now, if you. For people, you know, for some people, they have great stories and they can, other people can benefit from their stories so much. And I find it's not always that easy for people to open up, but their stories are so beneficial. And like you said earlier, if you can share that story, people will make a connection with you and then they will understand you better. And then they will be able to work with you and develop a relationship that 
is far more beneficial than ever before. Now, what's your suggestion for people who have a hard time opening up, but they have a valuable story to share? Um, usually, if it's a hard time opening up, just in general, it's easier for them to write it down mm -hmm. because they don't have to speak it, at least not to begin with. Right. If it's from a traumatic experience, it's essential that you write it down. Mm -hmm. And you, you'll have to do it in bits and pieces because it's tearing up emotions and feelings you have been trying to deal with. Right. Um, initially, even after it's written and it's a trauma, you right. are not going to want to tell it publicly because right. you have to internalize how you feel now about what happened then. Right. And that is terrifying. That's terrifying to anybody who's had any type of trauma, mm -hmm. um, whether it be loss, whether it be abuse, whether it be anything that has caused trauma. Right. Um, I think of all these little children that have been involved in school shootings. Mm -hmm. That's a trauma. Right. And eventually they have to talk about it because you can't internalize that forever. Right. And I think about the young man who was involved in the Oxford high school shooting in Michigan. Mm -hmm. And he graduated and he went to Michigan state and Michigan state had an on-campus shooting. And here he is living this a second time. Yeah. Wow. That's a lot of trauma. But he's not the only one this has happened to. It's happened to students from um, Colorado. It's happened to students from Virginia. So it's it's going to keep repeating itself. And somebody who has been in a previous shooting is going to have to relive it again. Um, there's only so much trauma you can internalize and not talk about before you just want to explode. Right. I agree. And you have to be able to find someone you can confide in. Mm -hmm. I don't care if it's a therapist, a teacher, a friend, a pastor, a priest, a nun, anybody you can trust. Mm -hmm. Talk to them. Talk to them as you're working through this, as you're putting it on paper. Because that person is going to be your support. Right. Right. That person is not going to judge you. They're not going to say you should have done, you could have done. That's not part of it. Mm -hmm. They're going to say it's okay. Right. It's okay to cry. It's okay to rant and rave. It's okay. And that will help you get through what you need to. Um, it's, it's awful. I have a friend who in the last two years lost her father, lost her mother, and just last week lost one of her sons. And I'm not sure how she's dealing with any of this because I know she had a hard time um, when her dad died and she had a terrible time when her mom died and this the Friday after New Year's just did her in. So you're thinking that maybe the first step would be to write it down. And then, you know, some people put it in envelopes. You know, I heard after they write, you know, many yep. people have told me they put it in envelopes and then they would 
burn the envelopes. And that would be a, a pat, a moment of that's the past. You got it out. And now it's time to live in the present and move forward. And it's the, and you focus on the healing process. And that it, that's very true. That's very true. A lot do. Um, and once you're on the road to the healing process, it's much easier to actually tell your story. Right. But yes, a lot of people do. As they write it, they put that segment in an envelope and they burn it. Others put them all in different envelopes and have a bonfire when they're done. Mm -hmm. no, it doesn't matter how you do it. It doesn't matter if you feel like you have to burn them. Right. You know, we've all had, we all have a past. Yes. And, and we can't change it. Right. Because it is past. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Um, storytelling is important because whatever it is you've gone through. So has someone else. Mm -hmm. And someone else is going to read what you have written. Right. Or hear what you have put on a podcast. Mm -hmm. And they're going to say, wait a minute. That happened to me. Right. Or something like that happened to me. Right. And maybe I want to listen to this again. And I want to hear how this person got through it. Right. Because maybe I can learn. Exactly. And that is important. That's way important. It's almost more important than the actual story mm -hmm. because it's given someone hope. Right. Very true. Very true. Yep. Um, when my first novel came out, it was a mystery. And one of my dearest friends was a librarian. And she said, really, you had to kill off the librarian? And I said, but it wasn't because she was a bad person. <laughs> it was because she was a good person. Mm -hmm. And when you find out all the background and rigmarole that went into making her who she was, then you find out the reason. Right. And when you find out the reason, you have several people going to jail, mm -hmm. not just one. Right. That it was a conspiracy from the word go mm -hmm. and a setup, and she never saw it coming. Right. And, and it was a, a murder that impacted an entire small town. And that's what people don't understand. Murders impact families. But they often impact more than just the family. Right. It's the same with people who go through and, and die from cancer or some other fatal disease. And it's like some of these people impact a lot more than you ever think. What motivated you to be a storyteller? A teacher. Mm -hmm. A teacher who said with my imagination, he would see me in books. Mm hmm and at 10 years of age, I believed him. Right. There was that yes. one teacher who gave you that 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 motivation to really think about it and then pursue it down the road. Well, and part of it was I had teachers for years who complained that I daydreamed. Mm -hmm. That they'd see me looking out the, the window and I wasn't paying attention. The thing was, I heard everything the teacher said. Yeah. I wasn't missing a lesson, but what I saw out the window was not 
the playground or the parking lot or whatever view was out the window. Right. I saw whole different worlds. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't make anybody understand this. Right. Those are just daydreams. Well, no, they were real to me. Right. I was wide awake. <laughs> you know, I heard everything. You know, somebody once, one of the teachers once asked me um, to stay in from recess. And I was probably sixth grade. Mm -hmm. And she asked, what do you see out the window? I said, it depends on the day of the week. She said, what do you mean it depends on the day of the week? And I said, well, some days I see a jungle. Other days I see a beach. And she said, have you lost your mind? And I said, no, I don't think so. And she said, what was I even talking about this afternoon? And I recited back to her all the stuff I learned from the lesson. Right. And she said, okay, go to recess. Because for her to process that wasn't going to happen in a second. Right. She couldn't see out of the box. No. No. If I was not focused on her and, you know, listening to every word drop out of her mouth, then I was daydreaming. How many, how many books have you written over the course of your life? Um, 17, I believe. Okay. Yeah. I think I counted them the other day and there are 17. Um, two of them are totally gone out of print. Can't get them anymore. Um, they were my first attempts at writing books. Mm -hmm. And they were originally supposed to be eBooks and they became little tiny 40, 50 page books. So they got printed, but my publisher didn't want anything to do with them. And I had written three, but he told me I couldn't write, the, couldn't publish the third one because I had quoted a beginning line from a novel and I hadn't gone and gotten permissions. Mm. I said, so take that one out. Um, I had quoted the first line of Moby Dick and Evidently, um, whoever holds the copyright on that doesn't want it given out. Mm -hmm. And so they won't issue permission. And I'm thinking, why not? Wouldn't that make other people want to read your book? Right. But it's such an impactful book the way it is. They don't want to give any of it away. Right. And I understand that too. So um, I told him to just take that one out and we'd work with the other ones because I had permission from the authors on some of them because they were authors in my publishing company. Mm -hmm. And he just wouldn't touch that one at all. Now, what would you have happen to, um, now these books, actually, they could be found on Amazon. Where can these books be found? All of my books can be found on Amazon. Yes. Okay. Excellent. And for people who want to, uh, be able to share their story, what types of tips would you give people, whether it would to, to be able to share their story for their overall health or to become a writer and be able to be a successful storyteller, or even to be a speaker and be able to get on stage and connect with the audience through their story, what suggestions and tips would you give people on to learn how to begin their journey as a storyteller? Oh, that's, that's a loaded question. <laughs> my, my coach um, that I've had, since 2019 mm -hmm. who has branched out in other things. Now, the first time I heard him speak, he stood on a stage in front of close to a thousand people. Mm -hmm. And he took out a knife this long. <laughs> I kid you not. 
it had a good six, seven inch blade and a three inch handle. I mean, it was huge. Maybe it was a longer blade. And he said, I want you to know this is the knife I used when I was a cutter. Oh, wow. And he talked about being depressed. And, you know, he was a high school athlete. He was a wrestler. And he did well. But he kind of got lost. It just wasn't, you know, being an athlete and the pressure of being an athlete. Mm -hmm. An academic and the pressure of being an academic. Um, he just didn't do well. Right. Um, and he was in college before he, he stopped cutting. Mm -hmm. And um, he met a wonderful woman. He married her. She is a therapist. And he tells her now, don't analyze me, Kel. Don't do it. Mm -hmm. um, she just, um, and she doesn't, but he could talk to her. And I think that's what helped him. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he's a, a university professor now. Right. And that was a lifelong dream. Mm -hmm. And he has achieved it. And he has moved out of some of the portions of his business that he is not doing anymore. Um, the fire ring, mm -hmm. he is not doing anymore. Um, his last one ended in October. I was a part of the last one. He's not doing conferences anymore. His last one was in October of 22. Mm hmm but it's allowed him to do other things. You know, he right. had his head talk, um, which was something that he never thought he would be able to do. And he did. Um, he's speaking in Europe this year. He's speaking all over the United States. And it's, it's great. He's just, I've watched him blossom. And yet he was already there yeah in 2019 and to watch him grow from 2019 through 2023 was amazing right um he did a huge online conference in 2020 because of course we couldn't have the conference mm -hmm. and he said rather than trying to give everybody money back and say this isn't going to work he did it online and it ran, I swear, 24-7. It was always over by about 9.30. Right. But people hung out and talked in the different chat rooms that he had. Mm -hmm. And it was almost a 24-7 conference for a week, for a weekend, four days. Wow. So, yeah, um, you do this. You, t you talk about what you have gone through. Um, it's not easy. Uh, my suggestion is if you're going to tell a story, whatever story you're going to tell, write it down first. Mm -hmm. Then tweak it so it says exactly what you want. Right. If it's trauma, write it down and put it away. Yeah. Give yourself a chance to deal with how you feel now about what happened then. Right. Because if you don't, it's still going to haunt you. Yes. You know, go ahead and burn it if you need to. But then look at it. Look at it with new eyes. Mm -hmm. And say, who can I help? Right. That's very important. Who can I help? Who might have gone through something like this? Very true. 
And that's the person you write for. Now, what services do you do? Because I know that you you help people in many different ways. Can you tell the audience the different services you provide? Oh, my gosh. Um, I'm doing legacy writing right now. Mm-hmm. So if you're interested in that, that's starting like this week with informational meetings on it. Um, I help people who have no idea what to do when they're writing. So we go back to the very basics. Yes. Um, we brainstorm all the ideas in their head. Mm-hmm. And I say, which one really appeals to you? Right. Which one do you really want to write about? Mm-hmm. They may not be personal. They may just be ideas that you have. It doesn't matter. And we look at them. We set up a timeline for how we're going to work on it. Mm-hmm. And what you need to accomplish week by week in that timeline. Right. Um, I do individual coaching. Um, I have a coaching client right now. who has been working on a book for three or four years. And she's to the point where I either have to do something with it or I have to throw it away. Mm -hmm. And so we had our um, planning meeting last week. Since the planning meeting, she's given me a partial outline, an introduction for her story, Mm -hmm. and a poem she wants to start it with. And she said, all of a sudden, I want to write this book. All of a sudden, it has that meaning it first had when I started. Right. And so we're meeting again. Tomorrow afternoon, I think it's tomorrow, might be Wednesday, Mm -hmm. but I think it's, I think it's tomorrow afternoon. I think we schedule Tuesdays and, um, we're going to talk about what she's done so far and where she needs to go with the next, the outline she gave me, she didn't realize she gave me the first three chapters of outline. Mm -hmm. She thought she was just giving me one chapter. And I said, look at how you've done it under headings. Take those headings as your chapter name. Right. And that will make way more sense. And she said, I never thought of that. Very true. And so when she gets these first three chapters written, Mm -hmm. she can outline the next three. Now, where can people find your website? It's my name, RebeccaVigas.com. Oh, very easy to remember. Yep. I try to make it very, very simple. Um, If any of your listeners is on LinkedIn, they will find me under Rebecca Vigas, the writer whisperer. Mm -hmm. Um, That's been trademarked. And today's posting was... Um, the last um, podcast we did together Mm -hmm. and I put the invitation to tomorrow morning's legacy meeting if anyone is interested just hit that link it'll register you you will get a free download on legacy writing and it will pop you the information on how to get into the meeting tomorrow morning Um, There are only 50 people in the meeting so that anybody who has a question can get it answered. I was afraid if I got 100 to 200 or 300 in there, people would get lost. And I don't want that. Right. Um, I I work very closely with clients and I don't want them to feel like they're lost in the crowd. So I don't schedule more than 50. Um, that big things are are not happening. Right. Um, I'm working on um, a specific um, writing later on this year for um, businesses and entrepreneurs who want to tell their story and learn how to use it as a marketing tool. Mm-hmm. Excellent. So um, that one's coming. I'm also working 
um, with my church on getting church legacy stories. Nice. And later in the, that's the second quarter, the business is the third quarter and the fourth quarter is kind of open at the moment. Um, I have a couple of ideas for what I want to do because it's going into the holidays. Mm -hmm. And so I am thinking um, that route. But right now, um, it's legacy stories. If you have children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren that need to know stories of their family. Right. This, this is the one. This is the one chance you have right now mm -hmm. for the next three months to get involved in this. So um, I will be doing local ones. I'm hoping to set up a few next week, mm -hmm. this week or next week or the week after at local senior centers um, and do it that route. And we'll see what happens. Um, I'm not sure. I have to check with the library and see what days they might have available for evenings. Mm -hmm. um, I may even have to check and see if they have any days available for mornings. Will this all be on your website, all this information? Um, it should be. I don't know that it is yet. Um, so um, watch my website. Um, if you find me on Facebook, it's just my name, Rebecca Vigas, and the information is all over there. So okay. you won't miss it. It's on, um, I have an aspiring writers page please put it there uh, or I have put it there. Um, I have a writer whisperer page. Mm -hmm. It's there. My personal page, it's there. Mm -hmm. um, so I have spread it out. It is on LinkedIn. Um, those are my two big um, social media places I go. Um, I tried Instagram and it drove me nuts. And I said, I can't do this. <laughs> <laughs> It's just one more thing that's beeping on my phone that I can't deal with <laughs> that we're done. <laughs> uh, but I, I do try to keep everybody informed. I will be um, locally putting an ad in um, the newspaper mm -hmm. because I am looking to see local people get involved. And there are some that are not in senior centers that still might want to do it. Can people also go on Zoom for you? And if they want to do something, a coaching service or learn about writing and storytelling or legacy writing, can they make an appointment and maybe have a, a session we do on Zoom? Yes. On my website, there is a contact me page that will take you to Calendly and you can set up a 30 minute talk. Um, or if it's something really detailed, set up an hour talk. I don't care which one. Okay. Um, and I'm available most days. If I am not available at that time, I will contact you and ask if there's a better time on that day um, or if we could schedule it for another time. Um, I'm pretty busy in the mornings. Mornings are not the best to get me um, unless it's Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Thursdays, I might as well not be available. Um, I do things with your global village where I also have a virtual office mm -hmm. um, that um, keep me busy most of the day. Oh, great. This sounds wonderful. You know, this has been amazing. I am so glad you came on today to share your knowledge about storytelling and how important it is and how it makes such a huge impact, not only in your writing life, but in your overall health, that being able yes. to, you know, to take things that happen in your life, whether it was a good time or a bad time or a time of triumph and obstacles, being able to put it on paper and then share it with people and give people the inspiration and hope they need so they can move on in their lives and they could help others in, at, at the same time is so, so vital and important. People really need to learn how to connect. And in our society, you know, people being able to connect one another has declined. So being able to, you know, to able to have storytelling, to be able to 
to learn how to do it, you know, it could help you in so many ways. It could help you health wise. It could help you in your career and your job. It could help you, you know, when you're in your writing career, if you're interested in being an author or a speaker, you know, storytelling is, is something that's very important. And even if you want to go on the internet and help people, you know, online, you know, being able to share your story with others and being able to connect with others is so important. So I'm so glad people like you are here to show people how to really, you know, learn how to correctly share their story and help themselves and help others at the same time. This has been wonderful. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I can't wait to speak with you. Now, remember everybody, Rebecca is part of our podcast community team. So she'll be coming on very often to share her knowledge and to share different areas of writing and storytelling and legacy writing. And she has a lot of knowledge throughout her whole years of her writing career uh, that she's going to be help helping people with their writing and being able to move forward to reach their goals and to be able to achieve their, their dreams in life. So thank you so much for coming on the show today. All the information about Rebecca will be in the description so you can contact her and all that information on how to contact Rebecca will be in the description box. Thank you so much, Rebecca, for coming on the show. This has been wonderful, like always. Thanks. Thanks for asking me. I enjoy it. Oh, you're very welcome. You have a great day. You too. Bye now. Bye-bye.